welcome to Get the Word in Your Face International. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson coming to you with a word from the Lord. God is worthy of all of our praise. He's the Most High God. El Elyon El Che, the Living God, the one who created the world and all that there is in it, all who dwell in it. Whatever is seen and not seen, it was made by God and for God. He knows what He has called. He knows what His hands have formed. He knows what he has given power to and what he who he's given authority to. He knows. And because he is the one who created the heavens and the earth, all things belong to him. Even mankind that he created with a choice. He made us like himself. He made us speaking spirits. And we can we can speak the will of our will into the earth today. We can speak those things that be not as though they are today. And why do we worship him? Why do we praise him? Because he created all that is seen and not seen, all that is heard and not heard. And then he looks on us and he remembers us that we are dust. That it, it, at any given moment, not in his sight, because he knows the day and the hour for us of our being born and our day to die. He knows it. And at the same time, we have the choice to agree with Him, to walk with Him, to hang close to Him, to be around Him day and night, night and day. Night and day. He wants to fill us up with so much of His wisdom and knowledge so much of understanding. He wants to give us an understanding. This is why we worship Him. This is why we praise Him, because He really loves us. Psalm 8 says, O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is Your name in all of the earth, who has set Thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and sucklings have You ordained strength because of Your enemies that you might still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider the heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you should visit him? You have made him a little lower than yourself and have crowned him with glory and honor. You made, his, you made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have Put all things under his feet, all sheep, all oxen, yea, even the beast of the field, the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passes through the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all of the earth. You know, out of the mouths of babes and sucklings, he's ordained strength. And that, that word that God has put in our mouths is that word of praise to him that lifts him up above the situations and circumstances of our lives. The, the word is everything for us. When I said verse 4, no, verse 5, he has made us a little lower than himself. He's the one who created the heavens and the earth. He's the one who sent his word into the world. And the Word became flesh. Jesus Christ, the, the righteous one, the Son of the living God who died and rose again, is the Word of God. He's the express image of His person. And, and yes, Jesus is, is one of the persons of the Trinity. He always has been. The Word has always existed. And this Word demonstrates to us, shows us that the no word that proceeds from the mouth of God can die. It is exalted, and He is exalted. And the Lord has put His word in our mouths. He's given us power. He's given us authority through Jesus Christ. And He's working this word in our heart and writing it in our mind. If we would stay with Him, if we would sit with Him, if we would walk with Him, if we would talk with him. And I was watching a movie yesterday on the, what was it, The Phantom. 
this purple phantom I don't know if it's called purple phantom but it's phantom and it's from 1980s or something and something that the guy did he's a superhero hero and he something the guy did he was talking to his dead father now I'm not big on people talking to their you know their deceased but this was this was a little different in the humor of the movie in the you know setting of the movie and as he's talking to his father it's like his father's really really there with him he's with him in all of his decision makings even when it's hard even in the joy part of it he's there with him talking to him encouraging him showing him how to deal with the battle you know and as I'm sitting here now speaking about it, he has ordained us he has given us strength he's given us power he's put his word in our mouth and he's he's here with us he's made us a little lower than himself and I hope this makes sense to you he's here with us he's putting his word in our heart and writing it on our mind this word that died and rose again cannot be defeated the word of the Lord will not be defeated but this word of the Lord will endure forever it cannot be put out it cannot be thrown out it cannot be trampled on because even though they trample it it lives even though they throw it out it keeps coming back there's no word of the Lord there's you no know, man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of God we are more than conquerors through Christ who who's given us this the Lord has put his word in our heart and in our mouth we've been ordained by God to call out on his name to worship him to praise him to look to him in everything he is our confidence he's our confidence our expectation is of God and that's not of ourselves I think I made this example of Jesus going to the cross and as he's going to the cross well as he's going to the cross he's got to keep in focus that this is for a much for a much greater reason the suffering that he's suffering this thing that he's going through is for something that he can see far off was he thinking about his crown or was he thinking about us he took on the nature of sin that sin that we have lived in that thing that has had us bound and wouldn't let us go we were debtors to the flesh Jesus wasn't a debtor to the flesh he owed he sh he showed how to not owe anyone anything but to love them he showed how he had power under control he had self-control even though the people hit him they spit at him they kicked him they didn't believe him he comes I like how it says that the word came into the world and they they didn't even know him they didn't recognize the one that they were created by it seems to me that every cell in our body should be radiating by the presence of, of Jesus everything in us should be like beaming shaking in the presence of the Lord because he's here the word his word on in the Bible should be cause us to like uh, uh, uh. <laughs> this is the word that Jesus when he laid down his life bent, bowed his head looked up to heaven said into your hands I commit my spirit it didn't matter what was going on to, to him physically or mentally he let it go into the hands of God and that's the breath we have to take that's what we have to do we have to let the Word of God stand when the word stands we're standing on it 
we're believing it we're trusting the word of god that whatever the lord said that's what's going to that's what's going to happen that's what's going to be accomplished we understand and we remember that no word of the lord returns void this is the living and active word of god the word that became flesh is in our hearts and that word is the word we speak to the situation to the mountain before us there's a saying in zechariah chapter 4 not by might nor by power by the Spirit of God, says the Lord of hosts. That's how the mountain is going to come down. That's how the situ situation and the circumstance shall be leveled. The word of the Lord will return. Boy, no weapon that is formed against you will prosper. If we just remember the one who made everything, the, the, the smith that blows the coals was made by God. That, that situation and that circumstance, the devil, it was made by God. He owns it all. Oh, don't take it the wrong way he made mankind with a choice to to worship him to praise him to acknowledge him and the more that we do the more unmovable you're going to be this is the kingdom of God is not shakable if we're shaken by the current world system and the current world order and the current things going on in this world then what kingdom are you living by don't compromise with this flesh. Walk by faith and not by sight. Stand with the word, with the belt of truth tied around your waist. Stand with the belt of truth around you. Don't give in to the feelings of this physical body, of this mind, will, and emotions. Your heart belongs to Christ. And he's supposed to be sitting right there in the center of you, sitting in right there in your heart. He's the one in the high place of you. He's the one in whom we run to and cast all of our care. He's the one who said uh, that he would answer our prayer. I have one more scripture. Well, I have a lot of scriptures, but I have this one scripture to go to today. In Matthew chapter 7. Verse 7 says, Ask and God will give to you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be open for you. Yes, everyone who asks will receive, and everyone who searches will find. And everyone who knocks will have the door opened. The Lord wants to supply all you need through His glorious riches in Christ Jesus. But He needs to give you peace. We need to rest. And lay our heart out before him, trust him. Here's one more scripture in, in Matthew chapter 7. Everyone who hears my words and obeys them is like a wise man who built his house on rock. It rained hard, and the floods came, and the winds blew and hit the house, but it did not fall because it was built on the rock. Everyone who hears my words and does not obey them is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. It rained hard, the floods came, the winds blew, and it hit the house and it fell with a big crash. Because see, the kingdom of God is not shakable. Our, we are built on this solid rock, Jesus Christ. Jesus the Christ, the anointed one, so the one sent by God. And if we allow ourselves to fall into his loving arms and believe that his arms are loving, he has nothing but plans of success for you, but plans of peace and not of evil for you. Through the rejection and the pain and the sufferings that Christ suffered. And this word, this word didn't change. It didn't lay down before the enemy and give up. And this word that Christ is, this very word, is dwelling in our hearts. Then it is true that what Jesus said in, in John chapter 15, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, you'd be able to ask for what you would and it would happen for you. The Father, he's, he so wants to give us what we need. You know, he's ordained us. He's given us a power and an authority. He's made us kings and priests. And he has set us before himself. He set it as he set us up in heavenly places. Now, what does it say in Ephesians? 
that we are seated in heavenly places in Christ. We're not by ourselves. We're not outside of him. We're not somewhere far away. That's why in, in Romans chapter 10, it talks about the word being, you know, you don't have to go across the sea to get it. You don't have to go down in the ground to get it. You don't have to go up high in the sky to go get it. This bringing Christ up from the grave and pulling Christ down from the sky. The word is in you. It's in your heart. It's in your mouth. This is the word of salvation that we speak. See, in order to walk out our soul's salvation with the fear and trembling that we're talking about, that awe of God, <laughs> that in love with God, right? In order to walk it out, you, every situation and every circumstance that should occur in our lives, we understand that we are naked before God. And the Word is, is working in our heart and in our mouth, and the Holy Spirit's reminding us of it. And we're saying that thing to this situation. We're not compromising with the feelings and the infirmities of this body, of the world that we live in or the conditions of the world, or the conditions of your house, or whatever it is. Everything, everything is in the sight of God. He is Jehovah Uri, Jehovah Jireh, some people say, but it is, I believe it's Uri. And He sees and provides. There's nothing that He's, there's nothing that He doesn't know, no missing person that He doesn't know where that person is. And don't blame him for the missing people. No. The sin is in this world. The whole world is laying in wickedness. And the prince of the power of the air speaks into the hearts, into the minds of people. And they listen and they conceive the word. And once the word is conceived, it becomes sin. And they go and they do it. We are born that way, without God. Yet the true light has entered into the world, and that true light is living in us. And if the true light is living in us, and we're abiding in the light, as we should, then the magnificence of the power of God goes forward from us, and we are able to call on a thing. We're able to pray and intercede on other people's behalf, and what's supposed to happen, happens. <laughs> the will of God is done. The kingdom of God has come. The will of God is done in the earth as it is in heaven. He's working it through us. He's working it through us. In our prayer, my prayer is that we would calm down. Stop compromising with the feelings of this body. Stop compromising with the thoughts of our mind. And be still and know our God. Bible says that no, if those who know their God will do great exploits, do great things. That success that God has in mind for you will be worked out in your life because see, you're not leaning on anything else. You're leaning on Him and you're a doer. You get up and you do what you hear your Father say. You know in your heart that it's Him that speaks to you and you get up and you do it. You don't lay in the past in that situation. You see, the Lord Jesus in our, in our knowing him, like he says, I give you rest for your soul, he takes away that pain of the past. He wants to heal you and restore your soul and restore fortunes onto you. Whatever it is that he has in mind for you, he wants to give it to you. Don't worry. You don't have to worry about being rich or being poor. That doesn't, neither one of these things matter. All that matters is living in him and him living in you and the whatever he has for you that's going to happen because he knows that you're able to handle it because you put your trust in him and not you, you don't have any confidence in your flesh confidence is completely in God he is our expectation he is our expectation don't let your thoughts don't let the situation around you the people in your life who bring you the situations <laughs> Don't let those situations overwhelm you. Don't let the situations in our government overwhelm you, in your government overwhelm you. Don't let anything overtake you. The only one that is supposed to be able, able to overtake you is the Holy Spirit. I love how it says it in the King James, that if we hear, if we hearken unto the word of the Lord, 
unto his voice that he will that the blessings of the Lord will overtake us they'll overtake us they'll flow you might have the best garden in your area and be able to um, give food to many to so many people God is willing and he is able to give you a witty invention a witty idea that will secure the finances you need that, that help you and your family and so many other people because we need it. See, what we need is what the kingdom brings, not what the government brings. Our, our, our wealth is in God. It's not in the world. And if any of us rely on that social security payment, if any of us rely on, you know, the paycheck to paycheck living, or even if you've got enough paychecks that you don't have to live that way, that's fine too. But you can't, that's not your source of wealth. God's your source. He owns everything. And he knows where everything is. He knows how to give us a rest so that we're not striving and working in the dirt like Adam and, Adam and Eve had to do after the curse. That working the dirt like that, they don't have to toil and labor like that and, and come up with eight hours of work and, and a little bit done. wealth of the wicked is stored up for the wise the daily the Lord loads you with blessings he loads me with blessings this is the, the Lord a blessing isn't just monetary you know a blessing is that love of God flowing through you and the ease it, it eases your heart it eases your mind it, 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 it take, makes it so easy to walk through the situations of this life the blessings of the Lord are his words of wisdom his words of knowledge his words of encouragement his words of peace his words of life his comfort for you his comfort for your soul all we have to do is trust him and practice not leaning on your own understanding when those situations come be still and know that he's God just listen don't be afraid. Don't get upset. Oh, it's easy to say don't get upset and don't be afraid. Isn't You know, I have been there. I know what I'm talking about when I tell you these things. And I wish I had done it so much sooner than to have walked all this time being so upset with the situations around me. There comes a time when you've really got to be still and know that he's God says that the fearful and the unbelieving are going to be thrown into the lake of fire. I'm not talking about the world. The world, they already know where they're going, even though, you know, they, I mean, they made the decision. Don't take me literally. We know what time we're living in. still a season of grace. still time for people to come in before the door shut completely. But, but people make their decisions. What I'm saying is that when we said yes to Jesus, we were supposed to pick up our cross and follow him. Deny ourselves, pick up our mind, will, and emotions, regardless of what's going on with us, and follow Christ. That means get your face in this word. It means eat him up and drink him up. Have lunch with him, have dinner with him, have breakfast with him, have snack with him, have sleep with him, have wake with him. Have a friend with him and walk with him and listen for his voice. He's speaking to you today. And he wants you to be still and know that he's God. He wants to stop the compromise and the feelings of the situation, of the feelings and the infirmities, infirmities of this flesh. It's a trap. It's a snare. It's the snare of the fowler, the flesh of this body. It can tell me anything, and then I, I'll listen to it, and, and all of a sudden I got the symptoms of, of, of the virus, the symptoms of, of cancer, the symptoms of all of these other things. You can go to sleep at night, have a dream. Uh, I had a dream a couple of years back of there was two demons, and they were screwing things into my knees, and all of a sudden I had more swelling in my knees, more trouble with my knees, more pain going up and down the stairs in my knees. That's not from God. And yet they can do this while you're sleeping. 
They can do. They, they can invade your dreams. I don't care that whether you believe me or not. I, I, I mean, I do care, but I'm just tired of people pushing off those kind of things. They, they happen. I heard. I think I said this the other day. I heard while I was sleeping, you're going to die. And I just rebuked that in the name of Jesus. I'm like, no, shut up. <laughs> I didn't say no. I just said shut up. And all I had, let, all I heard next was worship songs. You know, you're gonna wear the victor's crown. You will overcome. You know, death cannot hold you down. <laughs> you know, you had all these songs that were like, they, they're like, no, that's not what God's plan is for your life. That is not what God's plan is for my life. I saw His end for me. I'd rather lean on what God showed me. And lean on what God promised in his word, like in the end of Psalm 91. He said that he's going to show us the salvation. He's going to give us life. And life more abundantly. Life and peace. I, I need to go to the scripture rather than just jumping around on it like that. But This Father, this Son, this Holy Spirit wants to work his will in our hearts. He wants to show us the kingdom. Yeah, he put the kingdom in us when we were said yes to him. But he wants to really reveal it to us by the time that by the time that we spend time, you know, with him. Not cutting him off when you go from one situation like we're sitting here right now, you're listening. And then you get up and you go about your business and the and the whole scene changes, the whole thing of your mind, it just changes. The whole world changes for you. And you're just something else and everything else going on and you're addressing that in this and this. But I'm telling you, if we he's with us wherever we are, wherever we're going, the time that we take and we spend with him, this is personal. This is just because it's this is my time and his time. This is his and his and mine. And I don't want to give it to anybody else. But when we step out there, it's it's really no different. Because this is the friend that never leaves you. This is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit who are in you. The greater one that is in you. And he's with you as you walk through this day. As you go to sleep at night. And he wants to give you instruction in your dreams. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. He wants to bring you to that successful end with, with the visions that he wants to show you. But we pollute ourselves with the things that we put before our eyes. God is good. He's worthy of all of our praise. Read Psalm 91 again. I know that through this time we've read Psalm 91 so many times. But God promises life, long life, for those who love Him. Yeah, we, again, we can say that we love God and sit down. I, I took time with Him. I took time with Him. But then we cut Him off just as soon as we walk into the next room. As soon as somebody comes into our life, as soon as a problem comes, we cut him off. And we be still and know that he's God. Hear his voice. You know he loves you. This is Pastor Cheryl Jackson. Get the word in your face international. Get the word in your face. I pray that the, the Lord of glory, the Lord of hosts, will send peace to you. That he would give you that rest in your soul that you so need. That he would help you not to lean on your own understanding, especially about the past. The devil's, the devil's victory is in the past. He's always trying to shove it in our face. Always reminding us of it. And if we don't get enough of Jesus, if we don't pour enough of Jesus in our hearts, then we're going to keep on going back to that place in our mind where we were hurt. We're going to keep remembering that sorrow. But he knows how to cut the nerve endings, the spiritual nerve endings that make us weep over that situation that happened in the past. He knows how to lead us in a plain path. He understands what the enemy is going to do. He sees it before it ever happens. When we trust him, he heads off the path. And I love it. I absolutely love it. So my prayer is a prayer of peace for you today of life and peace because that is what Jesus gave us you have victory in this day you have victory 
God, Christ has died and he has made us free. No longer debtors to the flesh. We don't owe it anything. We don't shouldn't trust it. Don't look to it. Don't lean on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him. And he will direct the path. Bye-bye.